Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. With me today is Maria Lindbergh, and she and I are going to discuss safe visits with our loved ones during COVID and beyond. So thanks for joining me, Maria. Thank you so much for having me. For people like my listeners, they've been visiting loved ones through the window, not being able to go in. And so we need to discuss how we're going to move forward, because obviously this is not something that's just going to be over and done with as much as we'd really like. So you had ideas on how we can visit with our loved ones during this time. And maybe, you know, as I talked with you last week when we were getting to know each other, my mom's Mm -hmm. memory care assisted living community had a huge flu outbreak Mm -hmm. in the winter of 1819. And it was kind of a similar thing, although not They didn't bar us from entering. (laughs) Now you work in a hospital, correct? Yes. Yeah, I do work in a hospital. I'm an occupational therapist. And for those who don't know, we are, we help you get back to doing daily activities that occupy your time, like going to the bathroom or getting dressed or just doing anything you need and want to do. So working in the hospital, we have a lot of restrictions for sure. I just wanted to talk about some things before you visit a facility, before you go in, it's good to check the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention because sometimes they um, update their, or they have been updating their guidelines since the pandemic has started, where they talk about Uh, what some of the symptoms are for COVID. So before you visit your family member, whether they're in a hospital or a care facility, or even before you visit somebody out in their home in the community, you want to look out for some of those, make sure you don't have any symptoms that you you don't want to share with anyone. And just, I won't go over the whole list because sadly there's a lot, but some of the some of those symptoms may look like headache, uh, muscle aches, chills, cough, shortness of breath is a big one, fatigue, runny nose, those kinds of things. So you want to make sure you don't have any symptoms that you're feeling very good, very healthy, you want to make sure that you don't have a temperature of 100.4 degrees or, or above, because that means that you are infectious. And before you go to the facility, it's also good uh, to check If there's a website that the hospital or the care facility has, maybe go on there to look and see what the requirements are, or you can give give them a call and see what you need to do. If there's like a certain entrance you need to go to, what the visiting hours are, if just any questions you might have regarding that. That's a good, a really good idea. My mom's community, the memory care, you could go 24 seven prior to this. And then I think it was March 17th, 2020, that they basically said, nope, nobody can come in. And then let's see, they asked me to come the day, well, a day and a half before she passed away. Mm -hmm. And having gone there for three years, I just went to the site, to the normal memory care entrance. And they literally had two sawhorses and some caution tape. And I just walked around them because, you know, there are certain rules I follow, but they told right. me not. So I figured the the barricade was not for me. But when I popped in, right. they were like, oh, no, you must go through the other door. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, okay, no. fine. <laughs> and I, my whole family has had low body temperature. So every time I go in a place where they they scan your your temperature, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, 97.6 must be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I've been having 97.3 a lot and I'm, I'm like, is that thing working right? Yeah. No, that's <laughs> for me. There was one day and I was feeling warm and I am at that age where it's like, Oh, okay. I was wait, but I'm a little warm here. And it was actually normal body temperature for the average person. And I was like, yeah. Mm, that's a <laughs> degree warm for me, but I'm sort of having a little kind of personal heat wave here. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Your I'm fine. And I was there summer, the day yeah. before. So I'm like, I think I'm fine. But so what should we do right. after we, okay, we've, we've made sure that we feel fine. We know what mm-hmm. the rules are. We're following the rules. We're not just going around barricades like I do. <laughs> Hey, I would have done the same if it in, in my grandfather's facility, I would have just whoop, 
you guys know me. Yeah, I right. was like, whatever. <laughs> you called me and told me to come, so here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately for them, it's a door, you know, the outside door goes into a little tiny lobby, and then there's another door that goes into the actual community. So they 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 stopped me before I got too far past the door. <laughs> <laughs> They got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. They were like body slam. <laughs> no, they were, they were very kind. And they're like, I don't think the care staff would have minded, but they were like, let's, let's follow some rules here. We don't know what's going on. Right. This was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and they did a good job because they have not had any problems. We were there in mid May okay. and they had not had anybody with a breakout. Nobody had died. So it was like, Hey, you guys did a pretty good job. It's been yeah. you know, two whole months and nothing bad happened. And, and then I was incredible. back. The, yeah. I was back the day before Halloween and they hadn't had any issues. And the one gal that I was talking to was pregnant. So I figured mm. she must've felt pretty confident that it was a safe place for a pregnant mom to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, cause I was, I was like, you were pregnant last time I was here. <laughs> like you were here and then you went on maternity leave and then you didn't come back and my mom died. Now you're back and you're, wait a minute. <laughs> Did you have the baby before? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, well, I wanted them close together, but I wasn't planning on that close. I'm like, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So now we're visiting. What should we be yes. doing? So while, while you are visiting, you're more than likely going to have to wear a mask the entire time. And that's just because with COVID, it spreads so easy. It could spread just with your breathing, with your talking. So it, it's good to keep that mask on. Try to avoid touching your face whatsoever. That can be really, really hard to do. I know sometimes depending on my cloth masks at home, whenever I'm talking or I'm kind of more of an animated person, <laughs> uh, the mask tends to slide. So if I do need to fix it. I wash my hands first or put alcohol on my hands, make sure they're totally dry. And then I touch my face to readjust the mask, make sure it's covering my nose and my mouth. So those are kind of two big things. But the third is still continue to try and social distance as much as you can in the facility. So if you are able to be in the same room and close with your loved one, that's, that's good, you know, be whatever, however close you feel comfortable with being with your loved one. But I would try to stay at least six feet apart from anybody else in the facility, you know, if, whether it's staff or other people. Of course, you know, we, we can only do the best that we can do. Sometimes you're in tighter spaces or sometimes staff needs to come in to take care or, you know, if your loved one has any needs. But yeah, I would try to just stay apart as much as you can. And and speaking of like going going into facilities, so I know I, I think it's so important, you know, as an occupational therapist, we are humans, we define ourselves by what we do. And we are social beings. We we need to be visiting with other people. So if you have somebody who is in a facility and you are able to be with them, you're, you're able to be in the same room, it's great to try and think about maybe bringing some activities in to make the time more enjoyable for each other. So I, I, I think about when my grandfather was living now, granted, he, he lived in uh, long term care in a memory care. Also, he had dementia. And at, at the time, there was no he, he passed in January 2019. So no pandemic. Luckily for us, when he was at the facility, there were no flu outbreaks. So we, we were able to just go in. But we I because I have I've also worked in uh, skilled nursing facilities and rehab and other places like that. I know how easily germs can pass from one person to the other. So we for my grandfather, I thought about things that he liked to do. And I would try to bring in things that were either that could be easily cleaned and things like if I needed to bring them in and take them out or things that were single use. So for my grandfather, he loved salsa music. 
So I could bring in uh, my phone. I could play music from my phone. We also had a CD player that we could bring into to play different CDs that he would like. So, and also for holidays or special occasions, like his birthday, we, the facility didn't make enchiladas. So we, we could bring those kinds of things in and bring it in something single use like styrofoam or whatever. If, if you live in a place that has con- single use containers that you can recycle, that that's a really good idea to kind of make it make the visit more enjoyable and make it more personalized. So you're, you're not just kind of sitting staring at each other. <laughs> <laughs> My mom liked to talk. Unfortunately, yes. her conversations didn't make sense. And she'd mm-hmm. ask you the same thing over and over until you wanted to bang your head on the wall. Mm-hmm. But she wasn't, her visual processing was so bad that there wasn't a lot that you could actually engage with her with. Mm-hmm. Like she wouldn't do any of the art projects. Sometimes she'd play the bingo that they had, but it was, I don't know, it wasn't her thing to begin with. So Mm -hmm. it was a challenge and I don't know that they're doing any of those kind of activities right now. Cause when I was Mm -hmm. there the day before Halloween and for those people who aren't following me on social media, which you should be, I was there. (laughs) I delivered handmade Halloween cards and a little treat box that I also made with one piece of candy in it just because that is what I do to keep from going bonkers if I'm not working. So (laughs) Right. My my stress release, my pandemic entertainment for what, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I only have so many friends. So I figured I'll just make for the residents. And they have the square dining tables have basically plexiglass, plexiglass X's. So Mm -hmm. each section is divided off, which I personally think is a little overkill because it's not like the residents are going, you know, out into the community. Although my mom would have been maybe, I don't know. My mom and I always went out to the park and the pool and the library. We always, she always Mm. liked to watch kids because, you know, she's a mom Mm. and a grandma or she was, and that's what she liked to do. And it made her happy. And I didn't have to like try to have conversations with her. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we would have been doing. I, I have I have made the comment that it, I'm mm-hmm. blessed that she was like, I broke my leg. I'm I'm not going to be able to walk anymore because they didn't mm-hmm. repair it. And she was not mm-hmm. willing to do the physical therapy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, which I was fine. I'm like, I can transfer her in and out of a wheelchair. That's great. I can handle this. I can move her from point A to point B and it won't take forever. This will be really nice. <laughs> I was like, you know, I had, I had made you were some nice a silver lining. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's, you mm-hmm. know, it'll be different, but, you know, I was like, am I going to have to get one of those thingies for the wheelchair on the back of my car? I'm like, no, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think they fold up. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like really getting ready for it. Right. The fee where she lived was going up tremendously because she needed a whole lot more care mm-hmm. and it was already time to reassess. And I swear if she had a moment of lucidity, she was like, yeah, nope. Can't get out of bed. It's costing more money. Yep. I'm out. <laughs> Pandemic oh, coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like, sometimes I just think, you know, it was like, she, it, because that's the kind of personality she had before the Alzheimer's. So mm-hmm. it was like, you know, this situation is terrible. I'm just, nope, I'm out. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, and I've made that comment because obviously for a long time, well, the parks are closed again, which is the dumbest thing, but whatever, you know, I am not trying to keep a state with, I don't know how many, 30 million people. I don't know how many people I drop or add way more than Missouri. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I mean, I, I've had a lot of guests that are from the UK and I just harass mm-hmm. them that California is bigger than their whole country. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like we have more people than most places. So it does right. add to some of the challenges. When we were talking last week, we mm-hmm. were discussing maybe throwing out ideas for the communities that maybe have had some issues and they still don't want, there's a lot of families that have not seen their loved ones for nine months, which yes. I personally think is just horrible. I mean, it's, yeah. we need to keep them safe mm-hmm. from this disease that's very easily transmitted, mm-hmm. but the isolation and the lack of activities, I mean, that's mm-hmm. to me is I think as bad 
Yeah. I mean that, well, I mean, COVID's going to kill you, could kill you, but isolation is definitely horrible for you. So it, it's, it's equivalent to physical pain. It mm. is just, just that mental anguish that you have with, you know, not visiting just people. And I mean, I know as a staff, like for me in the hospital right now, we do have to limit our time going in and out of the room. Like you have to think about, do I have everything I need to go in, take care of this person and then come out and, oh, by the way, I have X amount of other people to see. So not only are these people, you know, or residents not seeing you for long periods of time, they're also not seeing you frequently. So yeah, that can actually like cause like, like a physical kind of pain. And that that can be so challenging. So I, I have some ideas for your listeners. So if you are not able to visit your loved one, whether it's because the facility is saying no, right now, we, we don't want to expose our residents, or your loved one has COVID, and they're in isolation, some things that you can do a lot of facilities are doing window visits which can be nice. I've also seen online other facilities where they have constructed like a, a plexiglass kind of structure for uh, families to come up. I know it, it's incredible, but for families to come up on the outside easily and where their loved one can be transported so they could see their loved one through the window. And there are a lot of fun things you can do with dry erase markers. I actually had one of my patients a long time ago, she had dementia and she was an artist who worked for a work for Hallmark here. Yeah. Yeah. And so for us, it was wonderful because she was still very much able, she's still very much talented. And so she would draw these uh, little bears or little, I mean, just little, whatever popped into her mind. It's so interesting what happened, you know, or what we're still interested in or what we can still do. And so you can use dry erase markers to be very creative that way, drawing pictures, playing games like tic-tac-toe, just you could write messages to your loved one. You could also bring a whiteboard too with you if maybe the facility for some reason they say oh please don't draw on our windows I could understand (laughs) I'm sure there's some buildings out there who who would not like that idea but using bringing a whiteboard can be used for that also whiteboards poster boards I've seen a lot of families online bring poster boards with messages or they'll bring poster boards with pictures of family members so when you're talking about your mom and the visual processing but she liked to see kids if if you know the grandkids for some reason can't come to the facility and visit outside it is so good to bring pictures with you being able if you have a tablet if you can hold it to the window holding playing videos of grandchildren or children that can be really really nice options too for people yeah i'm glad i didn't Um, have to try any of those with my mom because mm -hmm. what 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 input went into her eyes, her brain scrambled it up pretty good. Mm. I'm surprised that she didn't have issues walking. That's how bad her visual processing was. Mm. Her mm-hmm. visual processing was so bad. It was February of this year. She was talking and she pointed at a tree that was about 100, 150 feet away. And she talked about some woman. And then there was a bunch of words that together made no sense. Mm. And I was trying to figure out what she was talking about. And I have like really bizarre vision. So it it's made it easier for me to understand what her visual processing is like. Like I don't have depth perception. So it's a lot of people with Alzheimer's, like my mom would shadows on the ground would look Mm -hmm. like cracks or, I mean, she, it was hysterical to watch her try to avoid her own shadow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) And it was hard not to laugh at her because it's like, right. Or not, you know, unless you figure out how to detach that shadow from your body, it's not, you're not going to avoid it. And she made a comment once, but she was pointing at this tree and she made this comment. And about 10 minutes later, I was like, I think that was actually a hallucination. So Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it actually was or if she'd had some of them in the past because she would. She would point at something in the distance and and put together words. Like I said, they were always very audible, understandable, actual words, but they were, it was like random. So they didn't, Mm. it sounded like a sentence 
and it was actual English words, but it never, there was nothing, there was like no glue to hold it together. Word scramble. Yeah, exactly. It was very confusing. And she got very upset if you like scrunched up your face trying to figure out what she was talking about. It It would upset her. So you just had to like let the word scramble go past you and then just say something that hopefully made sense. So I'm not sure if she'd had actual more hallucinations or if this was just closer Mm. to the end of her life. But yeah, you could point out something like cute photos of my dogs or videos of my dogs on my phone. And I have the 11, so it's not tiny. I mean, they're not Mm. huge, Mm -hmm. but she just, it, it was like, she could not connect what you Mm. were trying to tell her. And so I I was really glad that I didn't have to try to do window visits, especially because the hospital, but, her back was to the window. So it just been like this huge challenge. And like I said, she liked to sit around and talk. So, you know, my grandmother who's almost 103 is in a board and care home and they let you come in, but I get a little bit nervous because I don't know who all has, who else has come in for like the Mm. other residents. And my grandmother is very hard of hearing. Mm. You have to take off your mask and you have to sit like right on top of her. Like if you can sit wow. slightly behind her and rest your chin on her shoulder, then you can almost talk in a normal volume of voice. Mm-hmm. Not quite, but you don't have to yell. So I haven't been for a month because partly November was insane. And partly it's like, I'm not really super comfortable going, but mm-hmm. we were discussing offline maybe some ideas and rules we can put in place for when, you know, Mm. like God forbid this actually continues much longer (laughs) (laughs) or for those places that have had issues that still aren't allowing family members in. Cause I've Mm -hmm. talked to guests who are thinking about having family members, you know, it's like, I can't deal with my family member anymore, but I don't want to send them to a memory care because COVID and I would like to be able to see them. Or my grandmother has been in, you know, this place. I haven't seen her for a year. So I want to mm-hmm. take her out because obviously none of us live forever. And it would be really mm-hmm. nice to see our family members before they go. And a few months ago, there was a gal on Instagram and I, I searched around for her account. She lived in Oregon and she had actually posted ideas that she had for oh, communities great. to allow family members in. Mm-hmm. It was, you had to make an appointment, so you couldn't just drop in, which does sort of present its own problems. If they know for Mm -hmm. sure when you're coming, they can be perfect around you at that point. Limit the visits to, you know, half an hour so that there's plenty of time Mm -hmm. in the day for other family. I'm trying to remember. Obviously, safety protocols, masks, disinfectant, hand washing. And I can't remember if there was social distancing in her post or not. I was, I had scrolled Mm -hmm. through and I'm like, oh my gosh, those are really good ideas. And her post basically addressed the governor of Oregon. And then like the next day, I'm like, I need to find that gal. I could not find it anywhere. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. Hopefully you can find it. And yeah. Maybe she's uh, a listener and she can. Yeah. (laughs) Because I, I, I appreciate that state governments, many of them, not all of them, apparently, (laughs) <laughs> like I said, California, though, okay, we've kind of gone like the extreme of, OK, guess what? It's getting really bad again. So everybody stay home, even though nobody's doing that. And, you know, because we're trying mm-hmm. to protect everybody, but we're trying not to kill the economy. It's just like, I'm so glad I'm not right. in government. You know, <laughs> I'm not in right. state government or yeah. s- county government yeah. or state government because I just there wasn't there would not be enough Tylenol in the world for those headaches. <laughs> So, but I thought, yeah, it would be really rough. Oh yeah. No, thanks. It's like, like, I don't know why the next administration even wants this job. I think they should have said, you know what? It's too messed up. (laughs) Next. (laughs) Never mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to be president. (laughs) But I I think if we, as family members, you know, as family members of people in communities and, you know, mm-hmm. as a, an employee of a hospital or, you know, mm-hmm. if you've done, I would assume you've done, all, you said you did it in long-term care. Uh-huh. I think if we decide what we think is acceptable risks and talk about ways we can visit safely, like during mm-hmm. a really bad flu outbreak, like I said, they, it was in the assisted living community mm-hmm. and it was so bad that they 
closed the assisted living's dining room and were delivering meals to, I don't know, 300 apartments, 100 and I don't remember how many. There was a lot. It was two stories. So it was probably at least 200. So that's a lot of extra work. So, and they had right. the warning signs on the doors, big red, you know, red paper with, you know, bad flu outbreak. You might not want to come in here, but they didn't yeah. tell us we couldn't. Mm -hmm. They just basically said, you know, enter at your own risk. So, right. And right. the memory care didn't have a huge flu outbreak. I didn't know anybody that got anything other than just like normal. I don't remember any of them actually ever getting sick. They did a really good job taking care of, and they still are taking care of the residents. But I was always of the opinion, and this came from my mom's dad, my maternal grandfather. He always said, well, we don't get out of this life alive. And, <laughs> you know, because you can, you can prepare, you know, like you could save your money for retirement and then die at 50. I'm 54. So you can die right. at 50. That would really stink. So I, I kind of feel like even for the people that are at home, we need to balance safety with this mm -hmm. virus and trying to maintain some semblance of normal, which I realize mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why this pandemic has lasted forever. It's a lot of people are, they're focusing on the life as normal part of the statement. Yes. <laughs> so what kind, besides the time, you know, appointment type visits, obviously safety protocols with masks mm -hmm. and hand washing and disinfectant. What other things do you think memory care communities and maybe assisted living communities, mm -hmm. like, do you think it would be too much of a risk for other residents if I had taken my mom out in the car and we'd gone through the drive through or parked in the parking lot at the park to watch the non-existent children playing on the equipment? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think... You know, I think it's good to, to, it, you know, depending on where you live, obviously, California is so much more population dense than Kansas City. But I think the I know the CDC has put also places that are more low risk to go and like activities that are more low risk and things that are higher risk. So something that is high risk is going out to eat in a restaurant. That's a very high risk. And the CDC said people who eat in restaurants are twice as likely to get COVID. So, I mean, that, that stinks. I love eating out so much. I miss it. Haven't eaten out since February. We've been doing curbside though, but so, but other things that are lower risk are going to parks. So I'm really sad to hear that California has shut down parks because that is definitely a lower risk place to go. So I'm, I'm hoping that what facilities are doing, you know, well, obviously in the hospital, if you're able to go, then you're, you don't need to be in the hospital. But if you do live in assisted living, independent living, a facility like that, I would hope that that facility would be able to find a good marriage of finding things that their residents can do. And I think it it would be a huge communication piece with them with talking to family members like like what when you're if your mother was with us then i i would say like you guys going in a car going for a drive sounds wonderful and it's a nice change of pace going through a drive through and getting a milkshake or you know whatever they you know picking up curbside and going out to the park and having a picnic that's all great now, I know um, here where I live, libraries are closed right now. We only can do like if they have a drive through or, you know, pick up library books at the curb. So that that kind of stinks as far as that kind of thing. But if you were to go out for a walk with your loved one in the neighborhood, I know um, the this, well, I've worked at a lot of different facilities, but they typically have like some kind of courtyard or they do have like sidewalk access where you can actually, the last place I worked was right next to a grocery store. So actually I would walk with the residents to the grocery store to do some shopping there too. So yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that facilities can, you know, talk with family members and try to get that engagement. I know at the hospital, and I'm sure a lot of other facilities do this, they provide a tablet so that they staff can help residents make calls like over FaceTime or whatever video chat so that they can talk. And I know for me personally, that has been nice. I 
I, I've never been, I'm, I'm not an Apple user. I'm <laughs> droid. I know <laughs> my husband's a, an Apple user. He keeps trying to get me to go, you know, jump ship, but I'm like, I don't know. I've been using a droid only ever. Oh, you'll so, love it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using That's Apple since saying. before you were born. <laughs> it's 1982 when I was in high school back in the 80s when they said computers will give us a four-day work week in a paperless office <laughs> not kidding I no, no that I don't see that <laughs> oh it's been like 30 what are we like 35 I graduated in 84 so I cannot do math I think we're at like 35 years this coming year yeah, 36. I'm I'm 35. Okay. So I was born in 85. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so the the left, yeah, we had we started with Apple IIEs. Now I'm really dating myself. <laughs> yeah, hey, no. you own it. Own it. Yeah. Like this is my journey. Yeah. <laughs> well, just a quickie side note. Back in the old days when your Matt your iMac the power cable was welded to the back of the computer and the dog that just recently passed away when he was a puppy, mm -hmm. it only takes like two nibbles and the cable was pooped out because <clears throat> it got puppy chomped. So I take the oh. computer to the Apple store. You know, I have a photographer and now a podcaster. This was, this was before podcasts came out, I think. Not quite. They were still really new. And they're like, Oh no, we don't do loaners. And I'm like, can you just pull up my account, please? And they pull up their account and they're like, oh, well, just buy the computer. And then when you when yours is fixed, just return it. We won't charge you the restocking fee. I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> Give me a break. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't work when around. Apple was on the verge of not being a company anymore, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm gonna have to pull <laughs> crap oh, on no. rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we almost bought Apple stock. And we didn't because they're like, if you can't oh. afford to lose it, you can't afford to buy it. And I'm so mad that we followed that advice. Dang. Yes, you would have been very rich. Yeah, yeah my, my investment, my retirement account would have been a lot better than it is now. So, anyway, so yeah, make the switch. You'll be happy. My okay, I will. I'm yeah, go. <laughs> <you're> <laughs> my uh, mom's community has has a beautiful courtyard in the memory care, Great. and I personally think during the, the, I don't know when they started letting family members back in, but obviously in May, they let me in. I think it would have been just fine to escort the family members outside and then bring their loved one outside because it yes. was big enough. You could put, I'm thinking there was three seating areas. So you could do easily like nine people maybe 12 because one of them was kind of big i'm trying to like visualize how how far apart you could be and not be in the sunshine mm -hmm. and then that you know not that most elderly people want to go sit on the grass but that would have been an option <laughs> kids could have run around i mean you could have packed the right. courtyard full bodies if you weren't careful <laughs> the assisted living also had a very large courtyard that was on the east side of the building so it was shady mm -hmm. in the afternoon so it was very pleasant even on super hot days it was really pleasant i'm trying to think if they had an, as that was the well and then there was some spaces out front like there was two benches out front of the memory care and four outside the main entrance to the community so there mm -hmm. were a lot of outdoor areas the, the benches outside the main entrance probably wouldn't have been as as safe Mm -hmm. but they would have been an option. I mean, if the people going in walk down the middle of the path and the benches are on the edges, you know, I mean, your risk would have been a slightly higher than other outdoor areas, but that, you know, it's like, I I've, think I've it, talked it, to people. They could keep track of how many people are out there that that kind of situation work work great. Being outside is the safest place that you can be. And I mean, especially if you're, I mean, I think it'd still be good, you know, to be masked up outside, but yeah, being outside would be the, the greatest place. Hopefully they could invest in more overhangs for some protection and, and have just more activities outside that way. Yeah. And I know the community, cause there was, I think it was 2019. 
I always went on Mondays to visit mom and I show up one Monday and she was gone. I'm like, um, <laughs> where the heck did she go? Because my sister always went on the weekends because she worked in an office. So she didn't obviously go Monday afternoon was not really a convenient time for those people who aren't self-employed. And they're like, oh, <laughs> she's on the bus. I'm like, what do you mean she's on the bus? <laughs> they, they would put the residents on you know, one of the small commuter type buses. And I don't know where the heck they drove them. They drove them around town or something. And normally they did that on Wednesdays for whatever reason they shifted it to that Monday. And I was shocked that she went because she was always mm. resistant to anything different. It was like, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, your daughter's one. So you might have experienced this where, you know, it's, it's time to like move from one activity to another, or, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, it's time to put on our pajamas and get ready for bed. And, <laughs> you know, but, and that shift is just like, too much like no we're yeah. not doing this. yeah <laughs> you know, she's falling asleep on the floor it's like no i don't want to change it to my <laughs> and so that's kind of how my mom was it was like i'm happy sitting here saying the same five things to this poor other mm -hmm. resident that's sitting here. <laughs> there was um other i haven't told this story for a while so i can repeat it my <laughs> my mom had her dog with her the first 18 months she lived in the memory care and Seeing the dog would trigger this one particular memory that always started with, well, I've had dogs all my life. As soon as I heard that, I could almost sense when it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so I would try to distract because I'm like, I have heard this story 15,000 times. I do not want to hear it again. <laughs> my mom's been gone almost a year. Still don't need mm -hmm. to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> now there's things I would like to do with my mom, like go to the park and watch kids. I don't want to hear the story again. That's how much I yeah. <laughs> So she had another friend in the memory care that heard that story so many times she could start repeating it for the first time. My wow. Three together. <laughs> my mom launches into that story and the other resident was also named Diane. So other Diane goes, mm. you've told me that story 803 times. And I <laughs> swear I almost hurt myself because I was trying not to laugh. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like 803. Huh? That's a good number. <laughs> yeah. That's a random number. And then like a couple oh. months later, we're out in this beautiful courtyard and the dog is running around. And my mom launches into the story. I've had dogs all my life. And her friend starts repeating the same story. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. I've told this woman this story so many times that you've pro. I mean, like her mind is not good. I'm like, this is like elder abuse lady. You're killing the story. I was like, I was shocked. I'm like, okay, this woman can't remember who I am, but she remembers the story. That is yeah. awful. <laughs> I'm like okay that's incredible it was that's i was I'm like it was i'm i think brains are so fascinating and if i had they like I had, any science aptitude and i was half my age i might go into research but i'm not so good with the sciencey stuff so i, I, I mean never never say never <laughs> you totally could. i don't know after so, this year you never know <laughs> uh, yeah there you go you you totally could <laughs> career change but no yeah, wait was, go ahead Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it's so funny because uh, a lot of the things you're talking about, your mom remind me of my grandfather too, towards the end of his life, like the hallucinations, the stories, especially he had a, a traumatic brain injury when he was 86. Mm. And after that, it just unlocked it. He was no longer inhibited. He was talking about what happened in World War II, which he never talked about. Mm. So unfortunately, not some great stories, but he as like the brain injury and his dementia progressed there were certain stories where we could not we felt the same way my family we we're just like oh my gosh how can i politely listen to this for the thousandth time <laughs> i mean it's just grandpa i love you but oh my goodness this is so much yeah <laughs> she would she would talk about the dog so then i started i learned to start asking her questions like mm. oh you have what were their names what were their names? And so we, I actually have this on video. We were at the dog park with my, my three at the time. And so she said, well, I started with the name Misty. That was the dog she had with her. And that was such a good name. We just kept using it. And I'm like, mm, backwards. Okay. <laughs> <That's interesting. laughs> like, let's see. When I was a kid, we had Tinker and Trina. And then when I was in middle school, we got Daphne. And mm. then we had Holly and then Misty. 
And I remember some of the names from the dogs from when I was like before I was born into like early, early, early childhood. So I knew they weren't all named Misty. <laughs> <laughs> but I did learn to, to redirect that story because it was, it's when she was pregnant with me, my almost 103 year old grandmother sit, told her, well, now that you're having a baby, you'll be getting rid of the dogs. Apparently that upset my mom so bad that she remembered that forever. And she wow. would repeat that story in front of my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to learn how to distract from the story. <laughs> Fortunately, yes. I think there was only once when my grandmother heard the story and, you know, my grandmother wasn't a dog, isn't a dog person. We did help her a little bit with that, but you know, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. But what wow. would you do at a board and care home that doesn't have too many rules other than you must wear a mask? You think it's safe to go visit somebody that's 103 ish almost? You know, if, if I was feeling good, I, you know, the, we're talking about if, if I was to go into a board and care home and I was feeling good and wearing a mask, I, I, I wouldn't make it just like, you know, the, that person you were following on Instagram and they were talking about 30 minute visits. I would keep it no longer than 30 minutes because, you know, I mean, heaven forbid, you know, somebody there has COVID, but the longer that you stay in that room, the more likely you are to breathe in COVID. So I, I would make it short and sweet. And then I would probably uh, do a lot of those video chats that those FaceTime calls, I'd probably try to ramp those up just to make sure that you're not bringing in anything to grandma and grandma's not going to give in anything to you. Because sadly, I just, oh, this COVID thing is so interesting how we still don't know yet why it affects certain people the way it does. And why, I mean, there certainly have been cases where there's like centurions who get COVID and they're fine and they heal from it. We, there's just kind of, I mean, of course, you know, they, there's talks like if you, if you have any pre existing conditions like diabetes or any lung issues, then you're more likely to have ill effects from it. But yeah, it's, you, you still want to protect yourself and you still want to protect the residents that you go and see. I'm, I'm hoping in a board and care home that, you know, it sounds like they would be more lenient. You were talking about possibly taking out family members out in, you know, outside or, I, I would hope that you can have that conversation with whoever is running the place and say, you know, this is exactly what I want to do. Here's the plan. Here are all, you know, we're going to have our hand sanitizer. We're going to be wearing our masks. You know, is this something that we can do? Getting getting that permission, making a plan, and and then seeing from there if if they're willing to compromise with you on that. My biggest challenge with her is she doesn't like to wear the mask, which I get. None of us yeah. really do. She is mostly blind, so FaceTime calls are out. She's also yeah. profoundly hard of hearing, so phone calls are out. Half the time yeah. when I'm there, she doesn't know who I am because mm -hmm. I guess I don't yell loud enough. Because <laughs> I, always, <laughs> I always go up to her and say, you know, hi, Nana, it's Jennifer, really, really loud. <laughs> And, but there's, and they have a beautiful deck and it's covered and it's, I believe it's on the east side of the house as well. So it's, it's, I mean, even in the extreme mm -hmm. heat of the summer, it wasn't too bad. I did learn to put a little fan, like I was some Southern Belle in my purse. <laughs> there was a couple of times we ate out at a restaurant where I'm like, this would be okay, but it's a little bit warm, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, they've got extra barricades that are keeping the heat in. And there's not a place to sit in her room if you're not sitting on her bed and then she can't hear mm. you. So it's like, there's all these mm -hmm. extra challenges and it's like, right. You know, I wouldn't mind other than she's extremely frail, putting her in the car mm -hmm. and just driving around, but she can't see. So right. it's like, I don't know what to do. Right. It's so fr And you know, I mean, well, I mean, a couple of things that I think of, I know for people who are hard of hearing, if you are able to speak in the lowest or tone that you have. So when I speak to people who are hard of hearing, my voice is very high pitched. 
So I try to speak lower so that they can hear me better speaking slowly, you know, just trying to enunciate. So just slowing the pace, talking lower can, can be helpful. I know, I know it's difficult when they have low vision, they can't see. So, you know, can't use a whiteboard, can't really write anything down. But, you know, never disregard your how therapeutic and how calming it can be just to be present. And just if if your grandmother does like, you know, hand holding, or, you know, maybe even like, hey, grandma, I'm going to put rub some lotion on your hands, or bringing in if there's any certain scents that she likes. I know I love lavender, you could bring in that kind of make it more relaxing, even though, you know, I'm so sorry, she doesn't always remember who you are that I, I know that can be like, oh, you know, <laughs> my grandfather was that her, way too. Her mind is pretty, pretty good. I mean, being mostly good. blind and mostly hard of hearing makes basically means that you are in solitary confinement in your own brain, which right. that would put me over the edge if I had to live that way. And she sings hymns and things to herself. And that's, you know, how she keeps, keeps herself going. I mean, she's content, but her mind is not perfect, but it's, she doesn't have Alzheimer's or dementia. I think she just gets confused because <laughs> You know, she can't see, she can't hear. Although we were, the last time I saw her, I had to take her out to get her hair done. And as we were going back in, you know, she's leaning on the walker and I was wearing red capris and she could, she's like, oh, I like your red pants. And she like literally three minutes yeah. earlier told me she couldn't really see anymore. So I'm like, yeah. wow, these pants must be really red in the sun because she can see. <laughs> and it was just, it was one of those moments. So she, she can see some things, but I don't know. I'm, th I'm wondering if, see, I'm the only grandchild that goes and visits because my other two cousins mm -hmm. are in Idaho and I don't know mm -hmm. what's up with my sister. So other than just, it's, it's challenging. She can be really demanding and it's like, honey, mm -hmm. I just got out of that relationship with my mom. And there are days when, <laughs> you know, I'm grasping at the last coping technique and you're kicking it out from underneath me. So just stop. Right. <laughs> and if my schedule was less, if it was more predictable, well, it is predictable, but it's complicated. Right. I would, I would just say, you know what, I'm going to come back in two days and maybe you'll, you'll be feeling a little bit more up for a visit. Mm -hmm. it's just, Oh my gosh, it's so complicated. And we don't have a lot to talk about because she doesn't understand what a podcast is. You know, right. she doesn't really give a rip that my quote, don't tell anybody favorite dog <laughs> passed away. I mean, I have, oh. I have three. So, but this one was, yeah. he was literally my shadow. I mean, like yeah. wrapped himself around the office chair. It was insane. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, and then she'll say things like, well, I really miss my Chuck. She's talking about my dad. Like, mm. could we like acknowledge that we both lost somebody very important? Not just you. Right. I realize losing a child is probably very difficult, but you know, mm. it was still my dad and I still had to deal with you. And I lost a dog while he was on hospice. Damn dogs need mm. to live longer. So it's, they, they do. <laughs> it's like, well, the, the last one was 13. So he did pretty good, but it was like, yeah. you know, it's, you know, she'll ask me, well, what have you, you know, Oh, what, what are you doing to stay busy? And it's like, I can't even, ex I can't explain it to you. I can't really show you because you can't see it's like, well, I did right. this. And, and it's like, oh, it's really, it makes visiting challenging. And I'm just grateful that she has her mind because I'm trying to mm -hmm. get her to tell me family stories. And then I have a, yes. a lapel mic that plugs into your phone. So I just clip it to her shirt and then I don't have to worry about like literally having my phone jabbed in her face, which, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to see to know that somebody's got something shoved up next to your face. Mm -hmm. And if I'm shouting so she can hear me, the mic picks me up just fine. And it picks her up fine. So it actually works out really well, but. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm having difficulty. Sometimes I asked her when I was there before Halloween you know, like, what did they do for Halloween when my dad was little? Because my dad graduated from high school in 59. I'm like, so mm. what did you guys do? They lived on a farm. So it's not like oh. they lived in a, a neighborhood like, you know, we live in right now where they could trick or treat. <laughs> so trying to get these stories out of her and it's a lot mm -hmm. more difficult. That's, that's the kind of thing she would have loved. Yeah. I don't know why it's a problem now, but. 
right always, maybe Disney, maybe just not or not used to being asked questions like that and and going going back in time I was also you know you're bringing up family stories it made me think about armchair travel or just you know being in place but also talking about or asking her about places she's been vacations asking her to describe those places if, if her vision was better you could use Google Maps and actually plug in the address and and then she'd be able to see and maybe even recognize some places like what, you know, whatever hometown she's from, or you could, if you happen to have that farm address, you can oh, it's see, still there. see if there are any changes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how old the house is. It's definitely super old. Maybe I can get her to pull out some of those memories. Yeah. And maybe they don't, yeah. maybe they're... I'm going to have to look through some of the family photos. Maybe if I can find some old photos from my dad's side of the family that might trigger some of those memories. And then I can say, oh, I found this photo and this is what it looks like. Maybe that'll help. Very good idea. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You're describing it to her. Yeah. Maybe that or especially if it's something like I know in in my family, we have pictures of like certain birthday parties and there's like it's outside and there's lattice work or, you know, something, something like that hopefully would help trigger, trigger something in her. I know there's pictures of her with my dad when he was probably your daughter's age, you know, pretty, not wow. baby, baby, but not toddler, toddler. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> at that tiny gap when they're like, not quite, they're like, they're at that cute stage actually. Yeah. <laughs> and she's with another group of women. Maybe if I describe them, she might remember like, who are these people? Like, just give me like a random, their relatives, their neighbors, their people from the church. Who the hell are these people? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to tell me, well, there's five women and, and you're the second one from the left. And then there's, you know, but that sounds too tedious. Yeah, not, for me. not like that. Yeah. yeah. But just like, you know, well, dad looks like he's like 18 months old. So that would have been like December of 40 or four, yeah, 43. And there's seven mm -hmm. women in the picture and they've all got kids about the same age. And this is what the house in the background looks like. I'm going to try that. You know, hopefully yeah. she's game. So it's I, like, I hope so. I, I look forward to hearing an update and seeing, you know, if, if that worked for you. That would be cool. But if you're able, I mean, I just think about like the five senses, how can I connect with my family member if I can, they can't see so well or hear so well. So maybe trying to do touch or taste or smell or, you know, different, different kinds of things like that can, you know, you're, you're showing that you care in those ways. It is so hard. Have you seen those masks with the, with the plastic opening so you could see mouths yeah you seen that do you think that would work or no because no, she can't she see well she can't see well the mask yeah. muffles your voice because i find mm -hmm. when people are wearing a mask i have to listen extra hard and if i was hard of hearing it'd be like well <laughs> it's only so yeah. much i can do <laughs> so when i'm with her and like we would go sit on this she loved to sit on the deck so I would just take my mask off. And if the staff came around, I would, you know, I'd have it handy so I could just throw it back on. But I, mm -hmm. I don't worry. That's not quite the right word. I take into consideration that if I'm there and I take off my mask, there's probably other people that go visit their loved ones. You know, I don't know how my mom would have dealt with a mask. Mm -hmm. Like if I was wearing a mask, I mean, she already thought I was her best friend. So Lord only knows who she would have thought. <laughs> I was the masked weirdo <laughs> coming in, you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it was, it would be so unusual. Although the staff's wearing masks. So I don't know. Like, I'm really mm -hmm. happy that I didn't have to deal with all this yeah. uncertainty with my mom because she was already late stage Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. that was enough challenge adding this COVID protections on top of it would have just been like, Oh my gosh, no. It's the oh. whole different world. And, you know, it depends on the facility. So at the hospital I work at, the, the patient in the room, they don't have to wear masks. Their family or their visitors, whoever comes to visit them, they have to wear masks when staff are in the room. But if we're not in the room, they take it off. So I think it really depends on um, where you go and your comfort level as to uh, what's going on. Maybe, maybe at your grandmother's place, they do allow you to take it off. So they, they know that I do because they know <laughs> she can't hear. And right. there's times when she's talking to them or they're talking to her 
and they don't speak loudly enough. They're, Mm -hmm. you know, petite Filipino women and they speak softly, which is fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She can't hear them. And I have to like sometimes remind them she can't hear you. You know, I think they're trying to be respectful, which is nice because they should be. But it, and it's hard to be respectful when you're shouting at somebody. It's just yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just like, you know, being mean. I'm yeah. really not being mean. Yeah. And I know that. I mean, to me, it's, I understand it's more, it's, it's less respectful if you're talking to them and they can't hear you. So it's like, why are you bothering? Yeah. So I'm going to have to think I, about I don't the think scent. they do. Yeah. Like the, you the know, putting some, going. something that smells really good. She let, we always did mother's day tea at first oh. we would go to a tea place mm-hmm. which was i don't know why tea is so expensive <laughs> but you go <laughs> you go to high tea it's like 40 or 50 bucks a person wow yeah it's not cheap on mother's day it's a little extra for mother's day so oh, i would take my mom why. my nana, <laughs> my daughter and i so it'd be like 200 dollars mother's day tea and it wow. got to the point where sh- moving my mom around that much caused too much confusion mm. So I, I did it at my house and (laughs) this is how practical my dad's side of the family was. She's like, I enjoyed that so much more than the place we used to go to. I was like, (laughs) that place cost me like 200 bucks today cost me like 50 at best, you know, like half the stuff was things I, you know, it was like the, I made the sandwich. Like most of it, I didn't even have to buy extra ingredients for. I'm like, okay. So we just did tea at my house, but then you know, she, she doesn't move around comfortably. And that was before now, I don't know what happened this Mm. past summer. She got really frail. So Mm. it's, it's a challenge. Like she says, aging is not for wimps. That is a hundred percent correct. Yes. (laughs) You know, and she'll be 103 at the end of March, which just blows my mind. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah, I think a tea, mother's, well, kind of that theme would be lovely. That sounds really good. Whatever, did, was it just like black tea or was it a certain, a special It was flavored kind? black teas because I'm not into green teas. I think those taste like boiled grass. <laughs> <laughs> like, no green tea for you guys. It must have yeah. caffeine in it. Thank you. It does not taste like, I am all British tea. None of this there green stuff or any, you know, <laughs> must be black British type tea. I actually drink English breakfast every day, but yeah, oh, I will nice. do that. And then I will just ignore her protestations of, of practicality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. We're like, Nope, I'm treating you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Just, you know, let me do whatever. Well, and I was just thinking like some of the teas have a lot of scent. So now you got my brain thinking. So. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad. Yes. Yes. Roll with it. I just do this podcast so I can get my own solutions to my own issues. (laughs) Hey, you know, that's, that's a great thing. That's great. I always feel like, well, if I learn something useful, then obviously we're going to help, you know, other people might be like, oh, yuck, we Mm -hmm. don't like tea, but there's all kinds of flavored coffees. And I mean, we have a Dutch brothers here in town that it's like an hour wait to get a drink. It's like, why? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. It's like, why? Like, you know, they, the joke <laughs> is they put crack in it, you know, and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> you name like a double drive through. It's like, for wow. Real? And then the hardware <laughs> store is over there. So sometimes the traffic, you know, like the people trying to get through, I'm like, people, d- tea is so much better for you. It's less yeah. caffeine. <laughs> it's good for your brain. Just, yeah, it's okay. You know, but I'm thinking yeah. also like, um, a lavender scented lotion be really nice yeah just yeah lavender is too. so relaxing help her sleep better if she has the staff put it on her before bedtime yeah studies so show all... it helps with your sleep yeah i love lavender now i actually smell it because i'm thinking about it enough nana's gonna be happy to see you i hope so <laughs> yeah well, this has been a lot of fun and obviously yes. we've we've covered the entire gamut of visits from what we could do prior, what we could do for people in, in communities, people we can't go in and see. So I think we've started the dialogue on what state governments and the corporations that run the communities need to think about. Mm-hmm. I, 
I keep hearing that this is not the last time we're going to have some kind of pandemic. Like, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's been 102 years since the last one. So if we could just go half that amount of time, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on board with that. Let's shoot. <laughs> Like, just yeah, wait another well, 50 years. That. I'm just, I work from home. I'll just stay here a little longer. <laughs> there you go. You're doing all the right steps. That's what I tell people. It sucks to wait. It sucks to wait, but I just know it'll, it'll work out and be really good next year. That's all we can hope for. And, yeah. <laughs> and work towards making that happen. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.